In the name of Allah, who is most beneficent and merciful. My name is Uma Habiba. I am from BS Chemistry. My ID number is 19002067714. Today, topic of my presentation is electrochemical sensors. First of all, I would like to tell you contents of our presentation, which include electrochemical sensors, working principle of electrochemical sensors, like how they work, then types. First is potentiometric, second is conductometric, and the third one is amperometric. Then examples of some important electrochemical sensors, for example, glucose sensors, oxygen and carbon monoxide sensors. Then there are applications, and at last, I'll discuss about the conclusion of my presentation. First of all, we see what are electrochemical sensors. They are devices that give information about the composition of a system in a real time by coupling a chemically selective layer to an electrochemical transducer. Sensors which transform the effect of the electrochemical interaction and a light electrode into a useful signal are known as electrochemical sensors. So, now we study about how they work. They are used to detect the presence of toxic gases such as hydrogen sulfide, chlorine, and sulfur dioxide and variation of oxygen in the air. More specifically, they measure the concentration of a specific gas within an external circuit. So then we see operation of a electrochemical sensor. It consists of two electrodes, and these two electrodes are immersed in common electrolyte medium in the form of the gel. Like, there are two electrodes, and these two electrodes are immersed in one electrolyte, which is basically in the form of the gel. The electrolyte is isolated using a membrane. Electrolyte is isolated with membrane. A voltage is applied between the two electrodes through a battery. When gas enters a chamber, then the membrane oxidation or reduction takes place due to reaction of gas with gel, which causes a small current to flow, which is linear or which is directly proportional to gas concentration. So we see what happens when uh, a gas enters in this chamber. This reaction is either an oxidation or a reduction, and it depends on the type of the gas or nature of the gas. So we see what happens in oxidation, what happens when reduction reaction takes place. In oxidation, uh, there is flow of electrons to move from working electrode to the counter electrode through the external circuit. But reduction, a reduction uh, process adversely causes the flow of electrons to move from the counter electrode to the working electrode. The electrons within the external circuit detect and amplify this current. It then scales the output accordingly with a calibration to give a rating in engineered units and this unit is parts per million and which is used to give a percentage of the volume of the gas then now we have discussed principle working principle of the electrochemical sensors now we see what are types so there are three types potentiometric amperometric and conductometric potentiometric sensors are basically those sensors which relies on the measurement of the voltage and to measure the concentration of analytes it is necessary for a combination of electric and ionic current to flow 
in a closed circuit. Then a pyrometric. These are the sensors which rely on the movement of the current. These sensors have been shown to be effective in a broad range of applications such as volatile organic compounds detection in soils and groundwater and detection of mines and analytes detection in the blood. So they have many applications in our environment. Then conductometric sensors. Conductometric relies on the measurement of either conductivity or resistivity. This type of sensor comprises a capacitor that changes its capacitance when exposed to desired analyte. The capacitance of the sensor changes due at a selectivity material and those selectivity materials can be like polymers or other insulators. And these materials serve as the dielectric layer of the capacitor. And as a result, their permittivity changes. Their permittivity changes actually when they are exposed to the analyte. The sensors are commonly used to detect high humidity and carbon dioxide and volatile organic compounds. Then examples of the electrochemical sensors, breathalyzer, blood glucose sensor, respiratory carbon dioxide sensor, carbon monoxide, and oxygen sensor, which are actually gas sensors. So here we discuss in detail most important type of the electrochemical sensor, which is known as blood glucose sensor. Glucose testing tools like glucose meter, test strips, and variable sensors are glucose biosensors. These compact devices are comprised of several components. For a glucose biosensor, the following components are used. Analyte, bioreceptor, and transducer. What is analyte? A substance with chemical constituents that are being identified and measured in the process. Then bioreceptor. This is a molecule that specifically recognizes the analyte. And for the detection of glucose, the specific enzymes are used, which are proteins, because proteins facilitate a chemical reaction for a specific enzyme. For example, the test strip for a glucose uh, test, blood glucose test, contains the enzyme that interacts with the analyte in the drop of the blood, then transducer. This part of biosensor converts from one form of energy into another. Specifically, it converts the recognition of bioreceptor into a measurable signal. So these are several components of a modern day glucose meter. One is analyte, bioreceptor, transducer, then it is play. This is the analyte, then there is a bioreceptor, then transducer, which actually converts energy from one form to another. Then there is display from which we can now that how much level of the glucose is in the blood. Electronics and display. So this is the fourth component of a glucose sensor. These components process the transduced signals and prepare it for display. The processed signals are then quantified and shown on either the glucose meter's display on the or the receiver for a continuous glucose monitor. Enzymes which are used to detect glucose, they are glucose oxidase, glucose hydrogenase, nicotinamide adenine, dinucleotide. And there are many other uh, specific enzymes which are used to detect glucose. Then we see uh, what is continuous glucose sensor. It is a monitor. Uh, it uses a monitor. Um, and that monitor uses a filament coated in glucose sensing enzymes to detect glucose in the interstitial fluid. As a variable sensor, a continuous glucose sensor automatically detects and higher glucose levels 24 hours a day. A CGM, a continuous glucose sensor, can be used continuously for several days or weeks. The exact duration will vary by manufacturer. So implantable CGM sensor options, 
over months long wears. So it is one of the advantages of the continuous glucose sensor as they are embedded below the skin in a large capsule versus the thinner filament in other continuous glucose sensors. The sensor then works with a transmitter that sits above the skin to send data to a receiver smart device. The transmitter allows you to wirelessly view your current glucose level and trends, and you can be notified when it's time to replace the sensor. So it is the mobile application through which we can know what is the glucose level in the blood. The cost of a CTM device will vary by brand. But it is often more expensive than using a blood glucose monitor. This is because the CGM requires the ongoing replacement of the more costly sensors and transmitters. So there is a problem. How to insert in a body? With the aid of the needle, the sensor is inserted under your skin. The recommended areas for insertion for most commonly include the abdomen or back of the arm, but the CGM manufacturer will provide exact recommendations. So you have to follow that recommendations which are recommended by the manufacturer to where their product should be placed. To ensure that the sensor remains in place, an adhesive patch holds the sensor to your skin. Then we see and other important type of the sensors, which are known as gas sensors. They are also sometimes referred to as electrochemical analyzers or electrochemical toxic gas detectors, which are designed to measure the concentrations of specific gas, and those gas could be oxygen or carbon monoxide. And they measure the concentration of that specific gas within an external circuit. In the following, the answer is present that what gases they can detect. What gases do electrochemical sensors detect and measure? So you can see electrochemical sensors can detect and measure a variety of gases ranging from toxic to exposure, explosive to air quality, depending on the needs of the application, including the following oxygen, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide. There are many applications of the gas sensors, like they are used in fire detection, in home safety, detection of harmful gases in mines, and grading of agro products like coffee and spices. So they have many advantages in an environment. Then we see applications of electrochemical sensors generally. They are an integral part of our daily lives, making up the largest percent of all chemical sensors. Many of the applications are biochemical and biomedical, where the more generic term biosensors is often used. The most well-known and uh, arguably uh, the most impactful electrochemical sensor to date <clears throat> is the self-monitoring blood glucose meter used to assist diabetes in controlling their blood glucose levels. So they have uses uh, in the medical field. The range of applications where electrochemical sensors are in use and are under development is far reaching. Some examples include gas sensors, such as those used in homes to detect carbon monoxide, heavy metal sensors for water quality analysis and hydrocarbon, alcohol, and ketone sensors for measuring motor oil degradation. Additional examples where they can be used or they can be applied include biological or chemical welfare, food monitoring, medical diagnosis, manufacturing, automotive, home or environmental monitoring. Then we see uh, they ensure fast, precise, selective, sensitive, and easy to use analytical tools for the analysis of environmental samples. So they are very important in the analysis of the environmental samples. These sensor systems are effective and ideal for detection and monitoring of pollutants in environmental samples since they need a very small amount or volume of the sample for the electrochemical analysis. In addition, 
pre-treatment procedures are not needed. Future directions for the design and development of electrochemical sensor system can be summarized as. So now we can see what are the future directions for the development of the electrochemical sensors. Design and operation of new sensors platforms for the simultaneous analysis of the multi-component in complex environmental sample. Miniaturization of the electrochemical sensor systems. Implementation of automated electrochemical sensor systems with remote control for the continuous detection for environmental pollutants. And at last, for commercial commercialization of the electrochemical sensor system. So this was the presentation about electrochemical sensors in which uh, I told you about uh, some common types of the electrochemical sensors which can be used in our daily lives and uh, what are their uh, future scenario and uh, about their operation or working principle. So thank you.